from the basement of La Penta, this is WICR. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Sports Vault. I am your host with the most, Jersey Joe Archino, and it is very good to be back on the air. Honestly, I don't know where to start today, but what's better to start off with than the NBA playoffs? Cleveland, Chicago, game two tonight. Now, obviously, I didn't really get to go on the air and break down the first one. Didn't really get to see as much of it as I would have wanted to. It was at an awards dinner, but still, I think I saw enough, and I got an alert this morning. Tristan Thompson will be in the starting lineup this time for the Cavs. And I definitely think after reviewing the, the game uh, that that's the right move. I mean, when you look at their lineup in game one, you had LeBron, Mozgov, you had Kyrie, Schumpert, and Mike Miller. Obviously, Mike Miller is kind of put in a tough spot here because of J.R. Smith's two-game suspension. But I think still... Putting in Thompson in that lineup is going to help a little bit in terms of spacing the floor. And obviously, I, th I think Kevin Love, after the series is done, I don't know if Cleveland's going to be able to come out of this. I still pick them to get through this series. I still think that they get to the NBA Finals, but I don't think that they could win an NBA title without Kevin Love on there being able to play for them. But I think you see with Kevin is... It's always his presence. Now, there's no, not, it's not going to lie. He did struggle tremendously fitting in with the Cavs this year. But you still always had to account for him on the floor. And for that reason, the Cavs were really able to flourish. It's not just that he struggled and he was just a terrible player this year. It's his role for that team just made him a, a factor. Even Chris Bosh in Miami, people kind of criticize him very heavily for how much his game dropped off when he went there. I, I think when you have three superstars, one of them is going to have to t take a little bit of a back seat. And we've seen with Kyrie and LeBron, they'll carry the brunt of it. And Kevin Love has got to add in his two cents every now and then. This, Chris Bosh, it was the same way. He would have his game where he stepped up here and there but for the most part it was the presence of Chris Bosh you had to always account for him on the floor Kevin Love and Chris Bosh I kind of look at the same way in terms of the way that they fit in and they and they dropped off a little bit when LeBron was added to their team but and it's interesting now I think that tonight Cleveland is in a really big spot where they do have to bounce back and I think they will bounce back tonight I think Putting Thompson into that lineup is going to help a lot. I really, I think it's a much more reminiscent lineup of when you do have Kevin Love in there. Now, Thompson and Love are different, but Thompson does bring things to the table that Love doesn't have. Definitely in terms of he's just a great, great rebounder on both glass, uh, both sides of the glass, and so is Kevin Love. The only thing Thompson doesn't have that Love doesn't have is the offensive skill set. Love can create offense on his own. Tristan Thompson really can't do that. He really needs to off a off a dribble or off an assist from somebody. But he's very, very active, and I think situational rebounding is probably the biggest thing that. Tristan Thompson does well is he's always seems to be come up with big rebounds in big spots and I think he's going to have to have a huge game for them tonight in that starting lineup now I love Mozgov Mozgov has been a monster all year but I, I mean look at the end of the day we all understand it comes down to what does LeBron do what does Kyrie Irving do Kyrie Irving put up his end in the first game with the 30 points uh, I think again he's going to have to have another game like that and uh, his three-point ball We've seen from him all year and during this playoffs, the timely three-pointer for Kyrie has been a huge asset to the Cavaliers. He's really made, it's not just that he's made timely three-pointers, he's made big situational three-pointers and he in their difficult shots that he's been making. I think LeBron is where it all starts and we all understand that. The first game, he admitted to it, it wasn't good enough. I mean, Look, it's it wasn't bad by any means. I mean, he was really one assist away from having a triple-double. 15 rebounds, 9 assists, and 19 points. But I do think he needed to be a little bit more aggressive offensively. Now, Amon Chumper did have a nice game with the 22 points. And again, he helps you big time being that wing defender for them, really helping them out there. But I mean, the only thing that you saw is not enough off of the bench. I mean, you had James Jones with, the, with nothing, really. 
Della Dova really didn't have anything. Um, Marion, again, you can't really, you're not really expecting too much out of these guys, and it really puts you in a big, a tough spot without J.R. Smith for this next game. And the Cavs just have to get by with this next game. I don't, I, I think it's going to be ugly. It's going to just be a, a claw. A, a, you're going to be clawing your way to this victory, but you've got to do it because once you get, you get J.R. Smith back in this lineup, and you have his his presence in the lineup, I think things are going to get a lot more manageable. But right now, you do see towards the back end of that bench, without Love, without Smith, it's kind of depth is a little bit of an issue right now. I think moving Thompson in is going to help. And we'll see tonight. Kyrie and LeBron have got to go to work. It's what they've done all year, and we'll see what's going to happen. But I think it'll be interesting. And definitely Tristan Thompson being moved into that lineup is going to help. But again, last night we did have more action in the NBA. Last night the Golden State Warriors falling to the Grizzlies, 97-90. to And look, after the first game, I don't know what we were going to expect in this series. Certainly without Mike Conley, I mean... The Grizzlies really revolve around three players. It's Mike Conley, it's Zach Randolph, and it's Marcus Gasol. Their offense is really, and their whole team is predicated around that triangle of those three players. Now, you have guys like Vince Carter and Tony Allen. Vince Carter gives them that nice aspect off the bench. Jeff Green gives them that nice scoring edge. But I don't think anybody really has as big a role and is as important to the team as the three guys I mentioned at the top of this segment. Now, Mike Conley last night was just money, and it's one of those things where I really haven't felt like he's gotten the respect that he's deserved in terms of best point guards in the league in a while, but Mike Conley, the thing I love about him is if you look at him when he came out of Ohio State, he's progressively gotten better every single year. You could see it in his playoff performances every single year. I remember my freshman year here at Iona watching him in the NBA playoffs against the Spurs. You could just kind of see how much of a better player he had been become since the year before that. And then last year you could see how much of a better player he was. And now this year you see last night with what he's gone through this season with the injuries and everything and his situation right now with the facial uh, injury. He had a money performance last time. I mean, he was huge for them. I think Mike Conley is one of the best point guards in the NBA, and it's not even a question. The way that he's worked at his game to really become one of the upper echelon point guards, he's a terrific player. And look, they're back in the series now after last night. I mean, if they lose that game last night, it's over. It really is because the one thing, and I think Memphis – before the playoffs started, I did think they had a chance to get to the NBA Finals. But with Mike Conley's status up in the air, that was not going to happen. He was back last night and really showed in a statement that he was back last night. I think that, thought that was huge. And look, the one thing Golden State has they can't match is pace. When Golden State speeds it up and they play with the speed and the energy that they have... That's something Memphis struggles with because Memphis is going to bang you around. They're really trying to wear you down with their solid defense. But when the other team starts to really get into their offensive up-tempo, upbeat action, there's not a lot Memphis is going to do because they are a limited offensive team. The way that they really win these games is, again, grinding it out. They wear you down so much physically and when you have a little bit of an older team I think that becomes more of an issue Golden State's very very young I mean every single player on their team basically I mean I think Andre Iguodala is, is still a very is a still a pretty solid player and he's not even up there but I mean the core of this team is young Clay and Steph are young guys they have fresh legs they have speed Draymond Green Harrison Barnes all of these players they're young guys. They still have the fresh legs. I don't think that method works as well on Golden State. And we're going to see. I mean, look, they're back in the series now. Having Mike Conley back, they have the formula. And I see a lot of people this morning talking about Tony Allen. And look, Tony Allen is another one of those guys who is the perfect fit for the Memphis Grizzlies. Not a very good offensive basketball player, but he really only needs to give like his 8-9 points a game, and where he makes his money is on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, when you look at that starting lineup, Mike Conley, Marcus Gasol, Tony Allen, Zach Randolph, and Cortland Neely. The offense revolves around Conley, Gasol, Randolph, Lee, and Allen really help set that tempo on the defensive side. 
and that's what they do. Memphis has their formula, and it certainly works. And then the other one was Atlanta and Washington. Now, if you've listened to me a lot this year, you know I've never really been sold on the Atlanta Hawks. Just in the from the standpoint of, look, I know they play great defense. They move the ball well, and you saw that last night with, man, how many assists. I, I didn't remember what it was exactly, but, I mean, it was just phenomenal how they moved the ball last night and how they shared it, how many points were scored off of assists. But I think, for the most part, my philosophy in the NBA playoffs is you don't win without multiple stars. You need to have at least two, and you better have a third pretty good player. I mean, you don't win titles in this league unless you have a run. And people are going to point to the Dallas Mavericks. I mean, that is the outlier. There's always an outlier there. And I think that NBA Finals was more about LeBron disappearing in the fourth quarter than it was anything else. And I'm as big a LeBron supporter as anybody. He's my favorite player in the NBA. I've always enjoyed watching him more than any. He really has was the reason I got into basketball, LeBron James. And... I think in that series, he just disappeared, and their loss in that was as much as anybody. I mean, when you look at them blowing that 15-point lead, I forget which game it was in that series, but that kind of was it. That kind of set it was the nail, uh, nail in the coffin for Miami that season. But that's ancient history at this point. I don't want to dig up bad memories again. You get the point. And I think, I mean, you look at the Spurs, you look at the Heat, you look at the Lakers, you look at the Celtics. What do all those guys have? They have at least two and a really solid third guy who is making big plays in that series. And that's one thing I just don't get with the Atlanta Hawks. Now, last night, look, this is a series where I, I think it's interesting because Washington, I, I really liked them the way that they finished really strong dominating Toronto. I mean, just dominating them. Then coming into the series, they're down in game one. They fight back and get the victory. Last night, Atlanta bounces back. Now, I think this series is really going to go back and forth. Um, Washington is still young. They have a lot of young guys. Bradley Beal, John Wall, I really like what I saw from them in their first round matchup against Toronto. I really think in this second game, it's going to be huge. I think game, this, I'm sorry, the third game because the series is tied up. I think this third game is probably going to be the difference maker in this series because it's really going to show who can make the adjustments well. You've seen this the, each other twice now. Whoever kind of makes those better adjustments in this third Third game, I think, and, and if I did have to pick a team I thought would make better adjustments, it's probably going to be the Atlanta Hawks because I still think at times you saw this season Washington was very inconsistent at times. They had some stretches in the season where they just, I, I think there was bad. I don't want to call out the the coaching staff, but I think it points this season. Part of the fault uh, the end of their bad stretches was from a lack of discipline and things like that, especially in, in guarding the three-point line, late in games, giving up three-pointers, fouling shooters. I think stuff like that is what's made me worried. And I definitely think, I mean, look, Atlanta's head coach, Mike Budenhauser, coach of the year for the reason he gets more out of his team than I think any other anybody else really does. I thought it was between him and Kerr, and Kerr certainly has the star power that Budenhauser doesn't have. And, and it's certainly interesting. But tonight, it's back for the NBA playoffs. I think certainly the one we're all going to have, a, I mean, look, tonight's a great, matchup in in no matter how you look at it because Cleveland is in a huge spot they lose tonight they're done in this series there's just no other way around it and when you look at the problems that they have right now in terms of the depth without J.R. Smith losing Kevin Love I certainly think that's a possibility and then the Clippers and the Rockets, certainly no one expected the Clippers to win that game the way that they did without Chris Paul. And that really tells me what I needed to see, though. I think the Clippers do win this series. I wasn't so sure when the series started because, again, the Clippers had just gone through a seven-game gauntlet against the Spurs, really a physical series where they had to really expend a lot of energy. They're missing their point guard. And they beat the Rockets. And again, I'm still not having been in love with this Rockets team all year. I still don't think Dwight Howard impacts the game away in, uh, enough away from the basket. Harden has been good. I didn't have the biggest performance in the first matchup. And again, there's just times where I just don't love the chemistry of all these guys that mesh with the Rockets. Josh Smith at times, I don't love it. 
Um, Brewer at times, I don't love it. I, I think there's certainly a lot of times with the Rockets where I just don't know. And Kevin McHale kind of thought a lot of it was with effort, and they were just outplayed in that regard. Blake came up huge. And again, I, I like the thing that worries me a little bit with the Clippers is when they start to go through a little bit of adversity at times, they really, really get frazzled. When when Matt Barnes and DeAndre Jordan and Chris Paul, when calls go against them and they feel like the game isn't going their way, they really get frustrated and it, it affects their game tremendously. And that's the thing that's worried me about the Clippers at times. But I do think... Fighting the way that they did through the San Antonio Spurs series, I, I think that kind of is a big moment for them, especially in terms of Chris Paul's career because the knock on Chris Paul in his career to this point has been he's not hasn't been, always been a great postseason player. Well, I think he certainly alleviated a lot of that with his Game 7 performance, be injured the way that he was in playing and making timely shots, doing everything to win the way that he did. Chris Paul certainly alleviated and shedded that label. And, and look, winning game one without him against this Rockets team is huge. And I don't, I think if you look back at this series and the Clippers win, that game one is going to be the game that set that tone and let the Clippers win that series. Because winning the way, this was basically a game where Houston had no excuses not to win. Without Chris Paul in that lineup, that is the perfect way to start off your run in this in this second round. But they didn't get it done. The Clippers did. And I think that's the reason why they are going to run and continue to win this series just from that standpoint of they really did whatever they had to. And it's really an impressive one that they did there. But that's about all we have right now in the NBA playoffs. Certainly tonight is going to be a huge night. And it's kind of going to show us where these next series are going to go. Cleveland could be in a lot of trouble, or they could be right back in action because they do win tonight. You get J.R. Smith back. Do you see what Tristan Thompson does in that starting lineup? Certainly, you could see them gain that swagger back that they have, and I just don't think that they had in the first game. But I think LeBron James, you heard it from him. He knows what he has to do. He's definitely going to have a better game here. I just... If there's one thing that LeBron has done and changed in his mentality since losing the NBA Finals to the Dallas Mavericks, it's he's bounced back in games so well. And look, for a while there was that label on LeBron that he wasn't a clutch player, which was always garbage. It, it, he's really changed in that regard since that final. Again, I think that final, sometimes you need a wake-up call if it's in sports or if it's in life. And LeBron certainly got that wake-up call from the 2011 NBA Finals. I don't think there's that hesitance at the end of games anymore to take the big shots, to make the big plays, because he is the best player in the world, and it's not even close. And he knows he's the best player in the world, and it's not even close. And I think he's finally got that that confidence, that swagger, and that's why I think he will bounce back. He's done it so many times this season, and we'll see what happens, though. Tonight is huge in the NBA in both games. The Rockets are bit half. This is a must win. They lose this game, they're done. Cleveland loses their game, they're done. But we'll certainly see how these games pan out. But I'm Jersey Joe Arcino, and I'll be back very soon.